For this third installment in the series, The Origin of Black Metal, we will be heading over to South America, where we will be digging into a few more notable scenes, which were a part of the first wave, also of relation to the first wave of black metal. It was not actually black metal as you know it, but a more primitive style. The bands which will be mentioned have been part of the formation prior to bands like Mayhem and the second wave. They also had a huge influence on the second wave. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Starting off with Colombia city of Medellin. It is the 1980s and there is war. The paramilitaries and the Medellin cartel led by Pablo Escobar took control of the streets. Also the opposition, which were the guerrilla movements. At this time, Medellin was filled with violence, murder, drugs, bombs, you name it. The city was filled with oppression and chaos. During this time, many punk rock bands were forming and also saw the rise of a more primitive style of black death and thrash metal. It was also a dangerous time for metalheads. There seemed to be even more oppression enforced on metalheads as the idea of metal is actually seen as the opposition to unfair conditions and social unrest. The paramilitaries had set out to hunt down metalheads because of them being opposed to laws that were in actual fact unfair. The restriction and oppression that were imposed on the people of this time. Random disappearance and murders. Being a guy and having long hair in Medellin at this time was life-threatening. And who had long hair? Metalheads. In 1983, a band called Juana La Loca was formed. They then changed their name to Parabejum, which is the Latin translation for Prepare for War. The name as described by the band was perfect considering the social conditions in Medellin, Colombia at the time. They chose this name to aid in their mission, which was to prepare the war against everything. The war against everything. What exactly is the war that they were referring to? The war against sad conditions, terrible life standards, and against the oppression and unfair social conditions. The music they created was a perfect representation of the social distortion and oppression felt by the people of Medellin, the laws, the violence, the corrupted political structure, and also the fact that the city was being controlled by the Medellin cartel. Although Parabedrum have stated that they had nothing to do with or didn't care about the political and social issues, it was only natural for them to create such raw and aggressive music. With this, they gained a cult following in the underground. The result being a relentless sounding band filled with hate for oppression. The music was way different to the European scenes. They played with an extreme aggressive force. They played their guitars as harsh as possible. In the 1980s, Parabedrum, along with other metal bands from Medellin, Colombia, described their sound as ultra metal. So what exactly is ultra metal? It was used as a collective of thrash metal, death metal, and black metal, I believe. But it could be anything. But it was definitely unique to the Medellin bands. Ultra metal is something that exists only in that region. Although other scenes tried to emulate what was going on, it wasn't the same. Ultra metal is more of a 
cultural movement it's it was bound to happen because of what the people were feeling and you as a a a young teenager or in your early adulthood feeling this oppression and you're a musician so what is the next step you're gonna be playing i can't see you playing jazz or anything you have to be aggressive because music is an expression of self and 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 what you're feeling so you're feeling oppressed you are bound to create something extremely heavy and unique this music was savage and unpredictable it had free form structure the fact that many bands had sudden tempo changes which made it quite unique to the rest of the world and might arguably be the first true black metal band in essence Parabedjum included lo-fi recordings and had raw demonic vocals with lyrics in Spanish relating to Satan, war and death. There's also a theory that circulated in the scene at this time that the Scandinavian scene, particularly Mayhem, took heavy inspiration from Colombian bands such as Parabedjum. How much truth is in that? We'll soon find out as we progress through the extreme essence of what is Colombian black metal or extreme metal. Parabedjum, however, was a short-lived band from 1983 to 1988. During this time, they released a rehearsal tape in 84, two EPs, one in 87, the last being recorded. December 1st, 87, and released in 1988. The 1987 EP, which was released the same year as Death Crush by Mayhem, actually a few months prior, it is regarded by many as the superior release, yet Parabejum and the scene in Medellin, Colombia, is overshadowed by their Scandinavian peers. Blasphemia, formed in 1986, which included members of Parabedjum, namely Ramon, Ronaldo Restrepo, on bass and vocals as well, as Juan Jairo Martinez on guitar. They released their first EP in 1988 called Coera Total, which is the Spanish meaning for total war. Sadly, in 1998, Juan Jairo Martinez was murdered during the process of being mugged, apparently. Blasphemia are still active to this day, with their last release being in 2018. It is 1986 and Reencarnacion is born. They recorded and released their first demo in 1987. That same year, they played their first live show. In 1988, Reincarnacion releases their self-titled debut, which ended being the first metal full-length album in Colombia. Unique and somewhat experimental, even with the use of a violin, which was uncommon in extreme metal at this time. The methods and sounds created by Reincarnacion were later incorporated by the Norwegian black metal bands in particular. As mentioned with Parabedjum, we will soon discuss how the Norwegian bands got influenced by the scene in Medellin, Colombia. Reincarnacion has experimented with anything but metal in their mid-era, from anything they wanted to, even with avant-garde, non-metal and ambient etc this was the time the vocalist actually got deeper into philosophy which he now holds a phd for reincarnacion have returned to metal in the early 2000s and are still active moving on to massacre why mention massacre when they played death metal you might ask they still had a certain local black metal flair which inspired many so they do somehow belong in the early black metal scene not just because of this but even more important being the fact their first drummer known as bull metal in the scene 
Full Metal was the guy who had contacts outside of South America, namely Europe and the United States. He wrote to the Norwegians, particularly Euronymous. When Euronymous wrote back, he said, they don't have metal like the metal that was in Colombia. Can we go as far as saying that the Scandinavians were actually influenced by the scene in Medellin, Colombia? It is possible that Mayhem have been influenced by the Colombian scene as they too then incorporated a more raw and aggressive approach. Take a listen to Death Crush by Mayhem, which was released a few months later than Sacralegio by Parabellum, and say that the influence was not there. It is subjective, but there was a theory in the black metal scene at this time pertaining to this. Coming back to Bull Metal, the guy with the contacts, and helped shake Colombian black metal to the world. In 1993, he started a record label called War Master Records and released the infamous live album by Mayhem, Dawn of the Black Hearts, via his label. Besides being a drummer in Massacre at the time, he also played in many other bands, which included Typhon. Is Parabejum the first true black metal? Well, there was Bathory before this. The question is, did Parabejum and Reincarnacion, among others, have an influence in the shaping of black metal? I say yes, most definitely. Yet it seems to be overlooked, but it is an important link in the formation of black metal, especially early black metal, first wave. Not to mention the second wave. Tell me the second wave did not take inspiration from Colombian bands. With that being said, the scene in Colombia grew. Many bands spawned from year on. Early days included short-lived bands such as Necromanti and mid-era bands such as Nebiros, Infernal and Espat. Today, Colombia is home to countless metal bands. Moving on to Chile. It is 1985 and it is the birth of Pentagram. They played a hybrid of thrash and death metal, probably heavily inspired by the likes of Possessed, Slayer, as well as the German thrash bands like Sodom in Creator, etc. They released their first and second demo both in 1987, about eight months apart. They're probably one of the more notable bands from Chile. Next up is Death L. Formed in 1988, nearing the spawning of the second wave and also the closest to what second wave black metal actually sounds like. They were a hybrid between death and black metal with some thrash metal influence as well. Aggressive and unforgiving, the demo Vengeance from Darkness released in 1989 was sick, chaotic and twisted. They went on to do a split with Beherit the following year. I would consider them as an influential piece as well in the formation of black metal that was to come. With that, we end our first half. Now let's make our way over to Brazil. It's just over two decades of intense repression and military dictatorship between 1964 and 1985. At the end of this era, or close to the end of this era, as an outburst against the violence and poverty amongst the people of that time, we saw the rise of extreme metal in Brazil, namely thrash metal, death metal, and black metal. Today I will include a few bands that I believe belong to the first wave of black metal. Volcano, formed in 1980 under the name Astaroth, they played heavy metal, and in 1981 they changed the name to Volcano. While still playing heavy metal on their first EP in 1983, it was with their demo in 1984 where they started playing a heavier style of metal, which could be seen as thrash metal, 
but not the thrash metal that was being played in the United States or Germany at the time, but a stripped down, slightly less technical, yet more raw, aggressive, and extremely energetic that seems to fit perfectly in the first wave of black metal. They might be the first extreme metal band of note from Brazil. In 1985, they released a live album, and in 86, they released their first full length titled Bloody Vengeance. Sepultura started in 1984 by brothers Max and Igor Cavalera. Although they played a style of thrash metal which inspired early death metal, this is also something of note. The South American thrash metal scene has inspired both black and death metal actually. With that being said, if you look at Sepultura today, it seems implausible that there was a time in 1984, the split release with Overdose, the Sepultura side called Bestial Devastation, which would later be re-released as an EP. Apparently it was recorded in two days. The music on here is dark, heavy and extreme, sometimes groovy, having influenced many black thrash and death metal bands to come. With that being said, it belongs in the first wave of black metal. A year after Sepultura formed and four years after Volcano, another band has spawned in 1985. This band goes by the name Holocausto. Although they became something else after their first full length, later experimenting with crossover thrash, progressive metal and even noise rock to mention a few, it was on their debut in 1987 called Campo de Exterminio, where they played an unrelentless, sinister style of thrash metal. Definitely Holocaust are part of the first wave of black metal. Sarcophago were formed in 1985 with the intention of creating the most aggressive music they could. Their lyrics and music were shocking at the time. They released their debut in 1987. The album cover features the band wearing corpse paint, bullet belts and leather jackets, which would become the attire of many black metal bands to the point of it being overused. Were Sarcophago the first to wear corpse paint? It is debatable. Some say it would be Kiss, Alice Cooper or King Diamond. But when it comes to actual corpse paint, Kiss were a bit more comical, even Alice Cooper as well. King Diamond, however, seemed to lean a bit more closer to what black metal represents, yet some say Sarcophago were the first to do actual corpse paint. Mayhem says they did it first though, with Dead having coined the term. All this is subjective, I believe. Anyway, back to Sarcophago. With the release of Inri, the blasphemous and pure evil sound of this record is what makes it a monument and a huge inspiration for generations to come. To this day, bands still play this style of war metal. War metal, so what is war metal? Okay, well, it is an aggressive, a very chaotic style of black metal, which has some inspiration from death metal and of course thrash metal. So not much focus on tremolo picked guitar riffs, but instead utilizes heavy down tuned power chords, frantic and unpredictable guitar solos, unlike the melodic solos of the second wave of black metal. Also, the production is not as thin and lo-fi as second wave black metal, but instead it's bass heavy, almost to the point of it being boomy or muddy. Second wave examples of this style would be Blasphemy, Beherit, and Arcote. 